Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Z NFT Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Gazer, and I'm here with my co-hosts, uh, Rolf Kovalvik, NFT Master, and Gordon Neal, our 3D modeling connoisseur master guy and podcast devel- uh, developer. Um, very exciting times, as always, but this week is very specific. We have a million awesome things in the works right now. Uh, we can't wait to talk about that as well. Rolf has a few interesting things to share t- at the tail end. Um, I all just want to say, guys. I just, I just yeah. want to say like to all you fans out there, I know things are kind of dark and quiet right now for our project, but it's just because we're lining up a lot of stuff that's going to long-term keep us in the game. I, yes. I think if, if, yes. if we were to just focus exclusively on NFT sales and with, with the, with the limited funds that we have as uh, in terms of a very small project, uh, uh, you know, team, um, it would be extremely difficult to continue right now. So what we're doing is putting all our resources and all our decks, pitch decks into uh, trying to find partnerships. I think it's something to- uh, We're so excited know. right now. Yeah. Dude, Matt, I, think we, I like, just can't believe yeah. it. I'm so happy to be alive right now and be in this crypto space. And this is fantastic. I mean, the fans, we're, we're doing this. This is from passion. This is from the heart. We're doing this for everybody. You know, and this is, we can't wait to share all this stuff with you. So, I mean, we're having meeting after meeting with VC people that are, and we're getting close guys. This is, this we're getting is, really this is close. awesome. This is we awesome. just had a meeting today with, um, Ionium blockchain I- ventures, Iconium. Iconium, excuse me, Iconium. And they're Iconium. Out based out of it- Italy. And what's interesting about this particular venture capitalist firm is that they're totally interested in the blockchain, DeFi, uh, web 3.0 types of projects. Okay. Um, another one that is coming up that we're meeting with is uh, maker makers fund. Uh, they just got an injection of 500 million to then invest from another investor for their firm to invest into, into companies like us that are trying to make entertainment through NFTs. Um, I can go, we'll, we'll talk about all of them in this, in this uh, podcast, but the one in particular today was really interesting. Uh, they're, they're a smaller venture capitalist firm, but they were very interested in potentially funding our card game and getting it to a place where we can expand our team and really get this done in a short period of time. Plus the, the topic of, um, uh, creating a Dr. Z token was heavily on the table. Rolf, do you want to talk more about that? Yeah. I mean, I think since the very first interview we did on set one with our buddies, uh, that made blockchain heroes, the, uh, uh, the nifty show guys. They were like, hey, you get should make a ZAM token. And all, a lot of our fans have been talking about that too. So we uh, just, you know, that's that's a high priority on our side too, is to uh, come up with our own token that, uh, ev- you know, especially the early adopters and stuff will be able to get in on. So uh, mm-hmm. look for some information about that coming soon. They were interested so. about our void token partnership that, you know, we want to integrate into the play to earn model, but they were, uh, toying with, you know, helping us maybe create yeah. a, a Dr. Z token for equity into the company where they would buy up tokens and then we would get the funds that way. And then hopefully when the game launches and the tokens go up in value, they could sell those tokens and then, you know, exit, uh, really interesting strategy. And I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Um, it, just one of many that were on the table in the meeting. But um, the, the cool part about it was that they're specifically in our space. They understand our our, our strategy. And uh, yeah, it was really educational. So um, another great firm that we have lined up for a meeting next week is with Griffin Gaming Partners. They're huge. Um, I think they're worth over a billion from what our understanding is. And they funded the likes of which include Blizzard, Activision and even Discord. So um, the fact that they're interested in our decks and they want to meet with us and discuss our strategy is massive and shows uh, proof that we're really doing something that's right here that's you know showing interest. Um, another great meeting also uh, next week is with Animal Logic. Uh, they've created uh, and developed the Lego movies and, uh, Peter, the Ra- Peter rabbit franchise in live, live action to name a few. They, the head of VP there, she wants to meet with us. So, uh, we got that in the books that's already lined up. Uh, I mean, the list keeps going makers fun. And like I, think, I said, it's just crazy. And I think we've mentioned before, like we, uh, you know, we really partnered with Michael Rubinelli. He's head of game 
uh, development for the Wax blockchain. And I guess, you know, Wax is just going 100% into gaming. Like they're, that's, that's what they're supporting now is people that are in gaming. And uh, we've had a bunch of meetings with Michael Rubinelli. He's actually at a big conference this week, uh, the Game Design Conference in San Francisco. Uh, the GDC. Conference. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we've had really constructive stuff with him. He's going to mentor us. He's going to help us uh, just guide us through, you know, how to the space. And he's a veteran of, of gaming, of the gaming world. So we're really stoked that uh, the people at who created the Wax blockchain uh, have taken notice of our project and want to, um, you know, they see the value and how that can bring value to the Wax blockchain. So we're really stoked about that partnership um, with the corporate. It's Wax just corporate. crazy. I, I feel like we're lightning in a bottle that's been put in a closet for so long. And finally, we're kind of opening the doors to the closet and and we're seeing the bigger picture. And I think a lot of people are realizing we're here. Um, behind the well, scenes, not, not in terms of the ecosystem on wax that we have some strategies coming up. That's going to really hopefully, uh, you know, blow the lid on that in terms of getting more fans, but, uh, in terms of like venture capitalist firms and, and film studios seeing all this hard work that we've done, uh, they could easily say no and not even, not even, uh, respond to our emails, but it's actually the reverse, which is pretty exciting. So. Yeah. And so just so you guys know, we're doing like a major re retrofit of the website because, you know, we anticipate a big influx of new fans, new people, and we want to really simplify everything and get more information about what the game is. So you're going to see graphics, you're going to see a lot more scenarios to explain to people what we're trying to do, because this has never been done before. The, the kind of game we're making, yeah, it's modeled off some other games, but we're doing a whole new thing and we really want to be able to educate people so they can see a graphic and quickly understand what this game that we're trying to make is about. I was going to say that a lot of people were asking about, you know, the whole thing of how I've kind of art wise kind of hit the brakes at the moment and, and what was the, the plan with that but initially i was brought on and a lot of people were brought on to to build almost a proof of concept and that was what we were doing so that when we went to investors we had like a big picture to put in front of them and say look look yeah. how pretty Ooh. um and that's what we're doing right now the, the whole base concept has been built the lab is pretty much at the, the most finished state we can get it right now with the money we had and now we're just basically saying like look here this is what it could look like this is what it will be um and matt's got concepts obviously as well so the, yeah. and this the, is the, the time the, we're the, taking yeah, go ahead yeah yeah. I was just going to say the the fundamental roadmap strategy for us is strictly the card game right now and the animated yeah. series if it gets picked up. But the 3D adventure game is definitely part of the roadmap, but you can't do everything all at once. You can do a few things at once, but you can't do everything at once, um, at least at our scale. So our plan has always been, and I'll reiterate if, if unless we, we haven't described this already, is that the card game should come out first fundamentally. Okay, so um, all resources in terms of trying to find financing as well as uh, conceptualizing all sorts of assets to the game, that card game are being developed right now. Like I just finished the concept of the splicer. Uh, this is yeah. like going to be a 3D machine in the UI where you're going to take your satchel and your trading card you bought NFTs and you're going to put them and meld them and combine them into this machine. It's going to pop out a battle ready unit of uh, that 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 concept is done that will be on the website we're going to have full explanations on how that process is going to work the first actual window concept of what the card table will look like is done i finished that this week um that's also gonna, we posted that on telegram and discord but that will be on the website with lots of diagrams and mm -hmm. and text to explain how how that's gonna how your battle unit is going to be applied to the table so yeah. like you know, you if you have read the white paper or the game game design doc, and you know you're kind of confused at what the what the visual language is going to be. I think the biggest uh, upgrade to the the website is to help illustrate you know visually as well what in simple form what this all means and how how it's going to work. Um, as well on the main page, we're going to help sell the 3D adventure game and show a looping video of our uh, 3D adventure game test that we did. What's interesting about that is we have a meeting with a company called Dark Slope Tomorrow. Um, they're interested in potentially making the entire game themselves in VR form. They have a huge studio, uh, huge mocap uh, stage, 
all, all kinds of assets in terms of production for all sorts of things. And the head of that company wants to meet with us. So that's an interesting thing. I mean, I think that would be cool to like be working on the card game internally while they're building out the 3D world. Um, you know, that's, that's, and, and that'd this be cool. is kind of like we're making a game with Gordon and our team in, internally, but this is sort of like another studio who's fully funded. It's a little bit more like the Michael Blue. Uh, collaboration we're doing where there's there's another group that wants to basically license our our stories and 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 make their own game but we'll obviously we want to be a part of of steering that um so that it stays the high quality story that that we want but it's it's like a whole separate thing you know we're doing our internal games on our own and then this is like another group that's going to be making a game like there's many star wars games you know, there isn't just one Star Wars game. There's different right. studios have created different Star Wars games. So, and um, it sounds like they're not interested in NFTs. So, if that's the case, there'd be a VR experience that would be separate from what we're trying to do. But our business model has always been card game first, and then money generated from the card game would help fund a 3D adventure game that'd be play to earn on the Wax blockchain in the Doctor Zams universe. That would be built internally. That would include our team. Um, but again, the card game is fundamental. It's near term. Yeah. We've got a lot of plans and it's all and coming. set three, baby. So set three is coming yeah. out. It's coming soon. We don't have an exact date when it's coming out yet, but it's, it's coming soon. And like Gordon's been working on Gordon actually has done some awesome animations. Like we have John Helms has done some that had did the animations in the past. And we got our, our own buddy Gordon here actually animated a bunch of the stuff so i can't wait to share that with you guys and uh set three it's coming man i think basically the, we're trying to nail down a date but i think the problem you usually see with a lot of games companies and we've been talking about in the discord with some of the guys is that you know we keep saying dates and i think we just need to basically say look it'll be done when it's done and if that's yeah i mean we always put a date out before we were done and then it yeah. was like matt and i were up all night going like pulling our hair out like oh my god what the crazy. hell crazy yeah. so yeah. this time I mean, there is a positive to having a hard date because it forces you to get it done. But then here's but, the here's here's where things yeah. are kind of taking so long. OK, so like we realize we have we found this great application where we can advertise to all 22,000 Wax Cloud wallets that have bought our product. Right. That's that's in, in our pocket right now. We haven't used that yet because we want to make sure our new website is up. Yeah, once we want our the website up. Web, yeah. Once our new website's up. Then we want to send out a free NFT advertising to everyone that set three is coming on this date and check out our new website. A lot of people that have fallen off the radar and think our project's dead will go back and be like, holy crap, they're like really put together because we are. Um, then comes the round of marketing, right? Uh, utilizing Atomic Hub, utilizing all the contacts and and sticker places that uh, we learned from the Hollow God collaboration um, and and pumping some some funds into that. And then obviously the Atomic Hub uh, advertisement uh, the week before the, the, the launch. So um, all these things are kind of have to come. One thing has to come before the next thing before we can launch set three. We can't just launch set three. It just won't be a success. So yeah. um, a you lot of craft well, and timing. Yeah, you would remember as well, Matt and Rolf are the only two people right now who are doing everything. You know, like they're taking meetings, Matt's drawing concepts, Rolf's taking more meetings, more meetings than marketing. Like, there's only yeah, we wrote, a, lot, lot, we wrote a business plan. We, yeah, I mean, it's we, plan. Got, we got our pitch script. deck for the animated series. We got a pitch deck for yeah. the company. There's only uh, two people right now who are doing everything. So that's, you know, if, if Matt we're and then we're, 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 we're on this we trajectory. After, we're about to yeah. after our meeting today, Mm-hmm. After our meeting today, we, we learned we have to figure out an evaluation of what our company's worth. And mm-hmm. so that's another thing we have to figure out. I told Matt, a billion, to billion dollars. <laughs> oh, you know what I did? We want yeah, yeah. Mil- we'll give you 10% for $100 million. Yeah, That's that, exactly. Yeah. So I told Matt. Yeah, right. Just let you know I'm out. Uh, <laughs> anybody out there wants 10% of our company? Yeah, yeah, We'll do it right now. We'll sign on the dotted line, $100 million. We yeah, have 10%. Yeah, yeah. Disclaimer, anybody. he's joking. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure there's people out there right now that want to be a part of the next Lucasfilm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. Not, yeah, I'm not only that as my wage for the year. So yeah, you, you know, we need, we need to that aim high here. So <laughs> that's true. That's true. People, I mean, you want to make high quality stuff, and it takes money. Heck, to do I, that, I so. would like to be paid. I haven't been paid in a year. This is the first yeah, time yeah, in my yeah. entire career I've never been paid. Well, I, I mean, I did a little freelance, but uh, yeah. you know, it's just. I mean, I mean, come on. We checked yeah. the box, the passion box. I mean, Matt and I have yeah. not been paid for any of this, so yeah, yeah. um, we're doing this all for the love of it. 
it's yeah. for that's kind of cool for the. I'd say yeah. that's kind of cool for the fans actually to know mm-hmm. that like by purchasing the NFTs, you're actually fundamentally uh, propagating funds that are actually in- engaging in real content that you're seeing. Yep, yep. You know, I, I mean, you, you know that we're not buying Ferraris yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> and people, don't forget, you can go back right now and and buy some Doctor Zamzi NFTs on the secondary market. Like, I just picked up some Blockchain Heroes stuff that was like, uh, like last year you would have had to pay like five grand, and I got it for like a hundred and fifty bucks. So there wow. is, there is like a, there's ups and downs, and I, I think Blockchain Heroes. I mean, I mean, sorry, not Blockchain Heroes. Sorry, um, the. Uh, Bitcoin Origins. Uh, Bitcoin Origins. I'm so sorry. Bitcoin Origins. They had these really rare from the very first set blocks because everyone opened them, and there was a couple that weren't open. So I got a couple of the, their packs, or I got one. Sorry, not a couple. I only got one, and before they were going for thousands of dollars. So wow. don't forget to go back and see, you know, what's going on with these other projects that. Um, there was a fan a on Telegram, or excuse me, on Discord. I forget if it was in Nifty Dom. I can't remember who it was, but they were saying uh, how they went back and bought a bunch of our our cards uh, or packs on the on the secondary market because there was they, you know they were good, I mean, good pricing. You can still stake all, all of our NFTs are still stakeable, uh, minus just the last few that came out. I just need to um, kind of once a month I have to up update with Onesis to get those on there, but. Anything from last year or before set one and set two, all of those packs and cards are stakeable and you get void, which, you know, these Onesis projects are about to pop and that void is going to be very scarce. Um, So lock it in. I mean, you literally get like 85%. The way the staking thing works, we haven't talked about this in a while, but you basically have to get void. You have to go to the Alcor exchange and I, these links are in the, in the, in the podcast notes, you need to, you can purchase some of this uh, void with wax on the Alcor exchange, and then you stake it to our NFTs through the whenstaking.com site. And you'll automatically, immediately, you get 85% of what you staked back in your wallet, which you then can stake again. So it's more than an 85% you're getting because you're getting 85%, then you can stake that immediately and get 85% of that. So say you staked 100 void you're going to get 85 void and then when you stake 85 void you're going to get what is that 70 void or something whatever 85 percent of 85 is and then you can stake that again what was what i mean i know it always fluctuates but like roughly what's the what's the what what's in dollars what is like a hundred void is it two bucks is it ten bucks a hundred bucks i have to look at where we're at right now but it's very low like this is the time to get it before it hits binance or a large exchange and it's and the games are functional. Like so, your recommendation is to pick up Void through staking and then wait for it to pop, and then you're going to be oh yeah sitting on some cheddar. This is yeah. everything's long term here. Like you want to, this is stuff you buy and hold, and you reevaluate after eighteen months. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the kind of that's the way crypto works. Is there's these ups and downs. You you hold, and you see what pops and what and yeah. You and diversify. If, if anyone's if anyone's curious about what Rolf's talking about too, go to our FAQ because we have a whole staking section on there that explains step by step on how to do this. And yeah. it's really uh, an untapped opportunity that I think a lot of people are just not realizing that is there. It's well, like it's like you buy your NFTs and you make you make some free money. I mean, it's kind of crazy. I mean, obviously you have to put we some money in. We haven't talked about it in a while. You know, it's kind of like there's so many things going on that we probably should advertise when we do our Atomic Hub advertisements here for set three we need to remind everybody you can stake everything on wednesday.com yeah. so yeah um anyway yeah that's, need to go back i'm glad we brought everybody. that back up because um it's pretty awesome actually it's a utility that you know we're really proud of i remember back when we uh, launched set one everyone's like when are you staking on our planet and we're like i have no idea what that means what, what's our planet so okay let me give you let me give everybody just the where we're at right now on set three so all of the art's done all the stories are done. Uh, Matt and I just have to do a few grammatical changes to like the story elements. Um, it's literally, we're at the point where we're just testing out the pack rarities and things. So we're getting close, but I just, this is our first time doing it. Not with, um, atomic hub. Like we're doing this on nefty blocks where we're making our own packs. So we have to test it out and make sure it's just not totally jacked up. So that's why, you know, before we had Jonah and his team from pink network, uh, you know, those are like the OG original guys. 
but um, you know, we're trying to do it's it. It's very our expensive own to publish on on their site. Um, yeah, it's very expensive, but it, they did a yeah. fantastic job. Fantastic they did. job. It was incredible, but, um, actually. Yeah. yeah, worth every penny. So, but it's awesome that we have these tools now where we can do it ourselves. It's, I mean, yeah, it's it's good times. Um, is yeah. it time to talk about pop culture now, or? I guess sure. Could, yeah. What do you guys have any other thoughts? Yeah. Oh, we can do we can do the old what have um, you been watching segment. So we we have this meeting tomorrow with uh this VR Dark company. Slope. And something I don't know if everyone knows this, I probably have told people, but I worked for 10 years in film production. So I started off working on Lost, the show Lost for 6 years and then I worked on all the shows that filmed in Hawaii. I've only done like one or two things not in Hawaii. Like it was everything I worked on was here. And one of the weirdest most fun things I ever did was on Jurassic world. I was blue, the Raptor. So like Chris Pratt's little buddy, the blue it was blue, the Raptor. Mm -hmm. I had to wear this tight gray suit and this like dinosaur helmet. I mean, I can actually send Gordon a picture. It's a screen capture from the DVD. I didn't take any pictures on set. You weren't allowed to take any pictures, but if you get the DVD or the Blu-ray, there's like these little visionettes where they talk about the making of, and we're able to screen capture a picture of myself from that. And we're wearing these like helmets and these tight little suits and we're running around and then they replace us with the CGI elements. And so that's relevant because we're meeting with this group tomorrow that they want to make a VR 3d. And the way they do that is they use real actors and they capture them. And that becomes like a character in the VR environment. They have a so. motion capture controlled environment where you wear a suit, like what you're talking about. Yeah. And then they uh, yeah. capture the performances and then put digital characters on top. Actually, when I was talking to Tim, it was kind of fascinating. He was saying how they're working on a technology, um, you know, through VR where you can build out an entire set in um, on the Unreal Engine. You put on your VR headset and you see all the performers in their actual C CGI characters, like walking around. And you, you're you going to be able to like direct them you know, on their performances in the actual 3D space of the set in all, all computer generated uh, through VR. So it's, I mean, this technology has been around uh, for a long time with Avatar and stuff, but it's now becoming more mainstream where, you know, smaller studios are, are picking it up and, and refreshing the technology. But yeah, it was a really cool thing to kind of see what, you know, what the potential is for animated series development and for VR. So good. And yeah. I don't have it today, but I promise next week or soon I, I got the razor crest and it's like this big. Uh, it was this thing we had a crowdfund over a year ago. It was, uh, through Hasbro that makes all the toys for star Wars. They have this thing called has labs where they do these special projects. And if they get enough backers, like you pay up front, it's kind of like crowdfunding. I had to pay $350 and 29,000 people did it. I wasn't, Oof. I wasn't the only one. And uh, it finally arrived and it's like my kids, my kids were like, it's bigger than like my four year old kid. <laughs> so nice. I'll try to show that. That's I'll try cool. to bring that next time to show. Um, and another, so another, if you go to has labs, you can just Google, you know, Hasbro pulse has labs and they have those special items that they're doing. And another one I just got, which is not coming till next year. I think it was around a hundred dollars is the GI Joe, uh, striker it's like a f14 tomcat they're reissuing that and they needed a certain they needed 10,000 backers and they got 16,000 so it's it's happening and, nice uh yeah i remember we We're had huge of fans of toys kid. here so that's really cool i remember when i was a kid i had the uh helicopter the gi joe helicopter oh, nice and uh this uh housing development was being built just down the road from me and they were, they built they had this huge trench that they were doing for like piping you know or whatever and I was always flying that down with my buddies pretending they're in the canyon you know and shooting each other it was I don't know I have that awesome. that in my brain for yeah. you know, there's a guy and years he, later I can't remember where he's from um but uh, he does photography but what he does is he poses uh, like Star Wars action figures and like, action figures from different movies and has like small little controlled explosions going off next to them and takes photos and it looks like stormtroopers running I've seen through, those. Like, terrain oh, nice. with like explosions in the back and it has like, really real oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like the real thing but then it's all action figures it's crazy i know it's pretty awesome I, that comes up in my feed on instagram i must be a target yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely toys and star I'm wars happily love accepting that, that target yeah, yeah, I love it. yeah. really yeah. cool 
Yeah. Love that. And yeah. then I don't know if I mentioned Vikings Valhalla. It's on Netflix. Uh, Matt, I don't know if you've seen that, but there's this new no. show on Netflix. Heard about it. Uh, it takes place 100 years after the uh, other Vikings show that was on History Channel. It's the same. Obviously, it's right. the same people making it, but it it is awesome. And if you've heard that nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down. This show is based off that. It's it's oh, freaking cool. awesome. Like yeah. take out the London Bridge. I got a show for you guys. Severance on Apple Plus. It is Severance. super freaking rad. It's produced by Ben Stiller. And um, hmm. the actors you'll recognize, I don't know their names, but it's basically about uh, a guy that goes to work every day, like a an Apple complex or you know corporation and he goes underground and he has a chip planted in his head so he can't remember what he's done at work so when mm-hmm. he goes back home during the day he has no clue what he a- what actually happened at work and okay. what happens oh, wow. at work in the office will blow your mind it's oh yeah really that's just uh adam scott yeah the guy oh yeah it's like yeah. secret stuff mm. so he so it's secret stuff he's working on at yeah, work and they don't want him to know this, this so gives nothing away literally he goes to work every day gets on his computer and he's got to identify these numbers and uh, based on feelings that he has and he has to group them and then put them in this like uh trash bin and he has no clue what it means they have all these theories that they're killing people whatever but then as and um Oh, this famous old guy's in there too. He, he's from a totally different department. All the de- departments are separate from each other. They're not allowed Walken's to. In it. Christopher yeah. Walken, thank you. Mentalized. He's in he's in charge of all the art that gets hung around the walls and stuff. And that's a whole separate story. That's crazy. But yeah, it, it it's like you just get a taste on the first episode. And you just want to keep. They just keep unraveling this world underground mm-hmm. in this in this in this laboratory, essentially. Nice. Yeah. Really, really cool. That. Severance. Severance. Yeah. I I just watched I'll actually. I just. Finally, I just watched uh, No Way Home, Spider Man. Um, oh, I still haven't oh, seen yeah. that. I really want to see it. Yeah, saw that with my oh, daughter in the theater. Really loved it. Okay, that's the newest actually, one, right? Actually, tear. I actually had a tear a couple times in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's it's, uh, it's definitely an emotional. I'll not spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it yet because it still is kind of. Is fresh, it on? Like, Can you watch it on at home yet or no? It's on. Yeah. It's uh-huh. on hey, hey, Disney Plus have it uh, released yep. recently. Yep. So yeah, you can okay. watch Disney Plus if you have it. Yeah. Oh, it's on yeah, Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. Like for free? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, you've got to be a member of Disney Plus, obviously. But yeah, yeah it's, it was March Oh, I 20th. have Disney Plus. You're saying it's on Disney Plus now? Is Spider-Man yeah, yeah, yeah. No Way Home? Yeah. March 20th, I think it came out, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I have not seen that yet. I'm so excited. Tonight? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm going to yeah, yeah. You need to watch it. Yeah, okay, the, the, I'm going to go. The, 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 I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mountain, the mountain you need to figure out those packs, buddy. Get on it. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. What comes first, Trof? Figure out the packs. Yes, bro. Yeah. So good. Yeah, and then also real quick, wrap up on uh, on one more thing that's developing is um, uh, the 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 collaboration with Yoshi Drops is totally awesome. Uh, Michael Blue yep. has connections with some A list uh, musicians. Originally, we were going to use his uh, EDM music that Michael Blue wrote for the NFTs, but now uh, we're in talks with a, a very famous EDM guy uh, to write music mm-hmm. or use music uh, from his new album uh, in the NFTs. So. Um, I think the success of this particular project with them is going to be not only fascinating, but a total success if we can get Tiesto on board. So he has millions of followers and uh, Yoshi Drops in general is, is just totally on fire. So yeah. very oh, excited so about many, that. We have so many uh, you know, things in the fire right now. It's crazy. Like people you know, look at maybe one thing that's maybe slowed down or one thing that isn't. But there's just so many things. Essentially, if like three or four things pop at one, off at once, we'd have infinite fund them. You know what I mean? Because there's just oh, yeah, so many. Totally. Things totally. going on. The animated series takes off, or a TV show, or a film like that takes off, and or the game, or you know, it's that's exactly. why we're doing so many things, different things at once because it's you know we're passive. Well, and we and, and a lot of these aren't requiring a lot of effort from us. Like Yoshi mm-hmm. drops, I I already I gave them all the art. I did all mm-hmm. the avatars. Mm-hmm. That's done. Yeah, I did yep. that months ago, and they're mm-hmm. just crafting the the variants and the way that yep. the NFTs are going to be rolled out and trying to get famous people on board to market this and um, that that's tentatively going out in June and mm-hmm. there's a rollout of like different types of NFTs over the course of like four months, you know, mm-hmm. each month would be a new, new drop. So yep. really cool. Yes. Lots of things happening. Lots of things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, and people were asking, I, Rolf, can we, can we, is there merch still happening? Have we, have we still got t-shirts for sale and stuff? Oh my gosh. Yes. I, I, yeah, I'll post some more stuff, but the t-shirts are on demand. So we don't make the t-shirts like that. We can make it like, there's unlimited t-shirts. It's just a company where we uploaded the pictures. 
we only get five dollars from it but mm -hmm. there's no shirts are made until you make the purchase like the ones yeah. i sent you gordon mm -hmm. i made i bought them and then mm -hmm. they make the That's shirt I mean. after you purchase it and then they send yep. it to you so there's unlimited shirts. I mean, if this shirt, these shirts are the most comfortable shirt I've ever had. I'm, I'm wearing one from the from Cotton yeah. Bureau right now. It's not from Doctor Zanzi, yeah. but uh, they're they fit really well and they're very comfortable. I agree. Yeah. So I'll I'll make some posts in Discord about it just to remind people that I mean we up I Matt gets mad at me, but I'm like, dude, can we upload some more pictures? I want to get some new T-shirts, and so it doesn't. And, so I got Matt to put in a bunch more. Like we got this Vizdij young Vizdidra is in there. Mm -hmm. We got the pink wax undrium. Um, yep. Uh, we got the Blue aged youngling. Too. Blue wax undrium, aged youngling. Um, and then obviously we had the Vizdidra in battle armor before and the Dr. Yep. Zamzi lab before. But I'll, I'll, I'll put mm -hmm. some links. I'll try to promote that more. Yeah. Trust me, it's like the most comfortable shirt ever. Like it's, yeah. Ah, I can't even, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it. let's not make this podcast too long. Let's say goodbye okay, here. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Uh, for everyone that uh, is listening, thank you so much for our, your support. Thank you, guys. And uh, really thanks for sticking with us. We're, we're working really hard over here. So uh, just stay with us and be patient. And we thank, thank you for everything. So take care. Bye. Aloha. Bye.